Hi, my name is Tomasz Pruski and I'm a senior level designer on Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. In this video, we wanted to show you something cool a lot of you guys were asking for, and that's challenge mode. The highest difficulty setting designed for the most demanding snipers out there. To show you what you can expect from challenge mode, we're going to play one of the many side missions available in Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. The side missions are divided into several exciting storylines, all related to the Rotki Lions, a resistance movement fighting for their homeland. In this one, we've received intel from one of their agents about an old military base with active payloads, located in underground silos. The Separatists are planning on launching them at strategic locations to cut off the region from outside help. And we have to stop them. Due to the open world nature of the maps, we have to get to the mission area first. The first thing you might notice about the game is the missing HUD. That's because we're playing challenge mode. All the non-essential elements of the HUD are disabled to make players rely on their skills rather than the game's help. The game's settings will let you customize which HUD elements will be visible in the game. Once we are at the mission area, we'll use the drone to find out the tactical overview of the battlefield ahead of us and look for a way inside. One of the most important aspects of planning our strategy will be enemy positions. But we're playing challenge mode, so it's not going to be that easy. The drone will tag our enemies, but when we call it back, the tags will disappear, so we'll have to remember their positions. When we know where the enemies are posted, we can secure our way inside with the sniper rifle. We can use the bipod to stabilize the weapon in prone position and have larger aiming angles. Before pulling the trigger, we'll adjust our instruments to line up a perfect shot. We zoom in on the enemy and check the distance. We'll set the scope elevation accordingly to compensate for bullet drop, use breath control and take the shot. The red wind bar will tell us how far the bullet will be pulled to the side. We have to aim for the head because the armored enemies in challenge mode can withstand a chest shot. We can switch to armor piercing bullets to make sure we do some extra damage. But we can only carry a limited amount so we'll have to make each shot count. That was actually our longest shot, so we'll get a notification and experience point bonus. Once we've sufficiently weakened the enemy defenses, we can start making our way towards the outpost. This one is fairly far away, so we'll jump in the car. We can use scout mode to look for ledges that we can climb in order to infiltrate the enemy outpost. It's good to look around because there's always more than one way in and it often involves using extreme navigation on some hard to reach places. Once we're inside, we'll try to find a good vantage point and scout the inside of the outpost. There are four missiles that we need to disable in order to ensure the safety of Georgian civilians. There's a sniper overlooking the base. They are extremely dangerous because they see everything that's going on inside the outpost, so we should always focus on taking them out first. We 
We need a tactical update, so we'll use the drone to scout the inside of the base. As you can see, the compound is actually a huge location, so we should really do our best to locate all the enemies. Once we're confident that we can remember their positions, we can either neutralize them or sneak past them. We take care of the sniper and search his body for useful stuff. We can obtain trading goods and sometimes consumable objects like healing items or grenades. This time, we do want to take out a couple of key patrols, so we'll take aim, set the scope elevation to match the target's distance, use breath control and take the shot. We'll want to hide the body of the last target because it's fairly close to the patrol paths of other enemies, and we certainly don't want to raise an alarm. The missiles are underground, so we can enter through one of those shafts and start looking. We've entered the silos right next to one of the missiles, so we can upload a virus that will render the first one unusable. Uploading the virus. There's three more to go. We're indoors, so we'll have to be extra careful. Flying the drone will be risky because of the chance of being discovered is very high, so we'll have to rely on our stealth. virus is coming to the second missile. We're halfway there. Two more missiles to go. An enemy is facing the door that we want to go through, so we'll distract him with a luring stone. That was actually a poor throw, so now the enemy will come right at us and we'll have to improvise quickly. We've scored another skill point, but this time it's Ghost Specialization Point awarded for stealth gameplay. In challenge mode, the enemies are more perceptive than normally, so being careful is always a priority. Working on the third one. We've got the third missile, but the mission parameters have changed. The Separatists are launching the last operational missile, so now we have a limited time to get to the main control room and activate the self-destruct sequence.
Because this is challenge mode, even though we're under time pressure, doesn't mean we can rush into the heart of the base carelessly. We don't have the luxury of facing the enemies on high alert. We can use the radios to lure enemies into traps. There's a heavily armored enemy patrolling the perimeter. Taking them out silently is very hard to do because we can't perform melee kills on them due to their armor padding. So only a shot to the back of the head would do the trick. For now we'll use a gadget to help us out. Since we can't tag our enemies, we'll use a warning device that will alert us of nearby enemies. There's another guard inside, so we'll use the fuse box to lure him out and set down an ambush. Once he's out, we'll still have to hide his body to avoid detection. The main control room is only an elevator right away. We're getting close to completing this mission. I don't care. Kick his mother in the jaw! <laughs> There's two guys in the doorway. It'll be extremely risky to try and rush them, so we'll use a flashbang grenade to daze them. We can take them out quickly with a chain melee attack. I'm in the command room. Fine. Find the main computer and start the process of self-destruction. Hurry up. Once we're in the clear, we activate the self-destruct sequence and hope that'll do the trick. We've successfully cleared one of the side ops. That was just one of many side operations that await you in the Georgian landscape of Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. Thanks for watching.